Welcome to our virtual convocation. We are so excited to see each and every one of you this year. I've had the opportunity to pop in on a few of your classes to see how engaged our scholars are as well as to see how engaged you are with our scholars. As I said before, once a teacher, always a teacher. So it has been really exciting for me to pop in to see those experiences. Well, as you can tell, I'm here in Maynard New Tech Middle School. Back to my days as a seventh grade science teacher, it has been absolutely remarkable. If you have not had an opportunity to visit, make sure that you take that opportunity to visit. I think about my science teacher, Mr. Clem, who motivated me to have the love of science. And so I'm certain that you will see a lot of that happening here as well as at your school. We are really excited to engage in this academic year. Although it is unprecedented, and we know that this is not traditional, the best educators that could possibly get us through this time, I'm looking at you. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for always being on the front line for each and every one of our scholars. Thank you for always putting scholars first. As long as we keep that in mind, we will always work towards becoming the number one school district in the state of Texas. Today, you're gonna to hear a lot of great messages, especially from Ava Adams. I'm extremely excited to hear her message. It's gonna be powerful. It's gonna let us know why we actually do the work that we do. So it's going to be truly an amazing event. So I'd say to each of you, Sit back, relax a little bit, and enjoy the show. But most importantly, always remember, Scholars First, number one school district in Texas. Thank you. My name is Michael Perkins, and I have the honor of serving as the Chief Schools Officer for Maynard ISD. The School Leadership Division is excited to work alongside all instructional staff to ensure high levels of learning for each and every scholar in our district. Teachers, we are committed to providing you with the tools, resources, and support needed to positively impact all of our scholars. Despite the current challenges, our scholars are well served by a collection of caring, committed, and talented professionals. And for that, we say thank you 
and go Maynard. I'm Angel Vidal, the Chief Communications Officer for Maynard ISD. The Maynard ISD Communications Department promises you that we will continue our mission to not only provide timely, accurate, and important information to our staff, parents, and community, but we will do so with the best interests in mind of all those that we serve. We promise to continue our open door policy and look forward to strengthening our relationships and understanding of our community. At Maynard ISD, we always put our scholars first. Hi. I'm Shane Sexton. I'm the Chief of Police for the Maynard ISD Police Department. And our pledge for the Police Department is to make sure that we're providing a safe educational environment where our scholars can learn, grow, and play. In addition to that, we want to be a valued resource for our community and make sure that you know that anytime you need us, that you can call on us. We're going to do everything we can to ensure that we're protecting our future heroes. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lott, the contact for the Equitable Innovation Division. I'm here to speak to you about this new area that Superintendent Dr. Andre Spencer has created to ensure equity and innovation is much more pervasive throughout the district. This new division will include the following departments, partnerships and wellness, parent engagement, fine arts, special ed, counseling and guidance, bilingual and English as a second language, federal and state programs, and college and career military readiness. We are all working in a challenging environment that people will still be talking about 100 years from now. These obstacles make it even more important that we work hard and work smart to get it right this school year and moving forward. Our pledge to you is that we will work tirelessly to ensure that all students get the support they need to make the most of their unique talents and gifts. We will promote leadership practices that reflect diversity and inclusion across the board. And we will help to create a culture and climate in which all students and staff can thrive. Please remember we are here for you. Have a great school year. Hi, I'm Cleota Epps, the Chief Human Capital Officer for Maynard ISD. Uh, you might notice a name change from Human Resources to Human Capital, and I think that's really important because Human Capital is really what we're here for. Our teachers, our staff, our faculty, y'all are the greatest asset for our school district and our students. As such, Human Capital pledges to support our district and employees by creating strong and honest partnerships with employees as we continue to make Maynard ISD a great place to work where employees can find purpose and do worthwhile work and have the opportunity to grow and develop. Every role has an important impact on student success. Human Capital will assist our employees in being the best they can be so that together we can support our Maynard students in all of their successes. Thank you for your contribution to this outcome. Hi, I'm Melinda Gildart. I'm the new Chief Financial Officer of Maynard ISD. I'm newly relocated from Chicago and I'm very excited to be here in the Maynard area. So my area, my department, manages the finances and the business operations for our district. So whether you're uh, working with payroll or accounts payable, our risk management budget, um, that's the area that we manage for the district, which for our primary purpose is to support our students and the staff that directly interact with our students. So whether it's dealing with payroll, accounts payable, the budget, uh, all the financial services stuff, we deal with that so that our staff doesn't have to. So they have more time to fully engage with our students and make sure that they all receive that high quality education. That's what we're here for. So thank you so much for welcoming me to the Maynard ISD family. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michelle McKinley. I am the Chief Academic Officer, Lead Contact, and Executive Director of Special Programs. Welcome back to what will be a most memorable school year. But every school year is memorable, right? On behalf of the academic division of Maynard ISD, which includes curriculum and instructional services, advanced academics, professional learning, 
Accountability, and Student Information Services, we are committed to supporting each stakeholder in order to ensure that our scholars have the highest quality in advanced academics and support services to prepare them for college, career, and or military readiness. We want all scholars and their instructors to be ready for the next level of success. Hi, I'm Elmer Fisher, Jr., Board President of the Manor Independent School District. We want to say thank you on behalf of the Board for the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you for all that you will be doing this year in spite of the circumstances that we're currently in. We want to thank you for all the help, all the teaching, and everything that you will do for our current scholars. With that, we hope that you will truly take care of your safety, your family, and yourself as well as every kid in Maynard ISD. Thank you for the hard work and dedication on behalf of the Board of Trustees. This is uncharted territory and, you know, luckily, well, I would say not luckily, but unluckily, we had the fortunate experience of uh, actually having uh, March through May in a remote learning environment. So there were a lot of lessons learned. So this time around, we were able to actually work around those issues and problems that we were having. Our technology department stepping up and doing a magnificent job in their one-to-one -one deployment. Um, our teaching staff being fully prepared, knowing this is coming and uh, you, going back and utilizing their past experiences to be able to bring about a successful learning environment. It, it doesn't matter whether you're doing this for the first time, second time, there will always be uh, issues that, that come up. And uh, we feel that we've done a, a better job of preparing our teachers, and I feel that our teachers are more comfortable in this environment, but again, we're still uh, facing unknown issues, and, and, and the number one priority there is being able to overcome these issues um, and being prepared for them, so that way we're not in a total reactive mode, that we're able to do things to be proactive and even heading off these issues as they um, arise. We have a, a group of dedicated individuals, um, teachers, principals, our central office staff, um, you know, and, and we echo the, the, the message from our superintendent. All students, all the time, and 100% and success. So with that mindset um, that we have, everyone is on board with the process that we've put in place. And we hear nothing but good things and, and you know, again, we are, we are in a challenge and, and individuals are stepping up and meeting that challenge every day in their, in their remote learning environments. Resilience. It's going to teach us that when faced with certain odds that we can overcome. And we can overcome because of our collective knowledge and our collective efforts. What I've seen happening here is that uh, individuals are now turning into teams, and teams are making the progress because of what each individual of that team is bringing to the table and sharing and discussing and, and having those, those dis live discussions for improvement. So yes, resilience is now at the forefront because we are faced every day with unpredictable circumstances. I want our teachers to, to know that their efforts are highly valued. Their work that they're doing from their homes, and we know on weekends, at nights, in places where no one is actually seeing them and they're not receiving the rewards, that our students are benefiting every day because of you and because of what you're doing unselfishly. And we want to say thank you, teachers, thank you, staff members, thank you, principals, for what you're doing. 
Hey everyone, I'm Tanya Ortega, the communication specialist for Maynard ISD. I hope you guys have all been enjoying our virtual convocation so far. And now it's time for some door prizes. So how we're gonna do this is we're using a random number generator. So the first two are gonna be throwaways and then the third number will be a winner. We're gonna do three winners per break. So you can see that we have all of our names uh, here on this spreadsheet. So we're gonna get started. So first one is a no-go, second one is a no-go, and this one is a winner. 1,073. All right, so 1073 is Jennifer Padilla from Maynard Elementary School. You're winning one of these amazing wellness baskets that we have. Uh, so let's go back. I'm gonna write her name down. All right, for the second, all right, so this one's a no-go, no-go, and here we go. Second winner, 1551. Fifteen fifty one is Lisa Wolfel from Maynard Elementary School. What are the odds? <laughs> okay, here we go. One more. No good. No good. And this one's a winner. One thousand and six. So who's one thousand and six? We go. 106 is Melissa Munez from Shadow Glen Elementary. Congratulations, guys. We're going to do this two more times during virtual convocation, so stick with us and maybe you'll be a winner too. Greetings, Maynard ISD teachers and staff. My name is Ava Adams and I'm a senior in Maynard Early College. I know growing up, I was always so excited for my first day of school. I would have my favorite outfit picked out, my backpack ready, and I would be so excited to be able to walk into the school and into my new classroom. So I definitely never pictured my first day of my senior year would be online. But hey, life happens. For me personally, the shift to online learning was tough to figure out at first. I was having to navigate the end of the school year without the comfort of my classmates being there with me. But all of my wonderful teachers helped to make it so much better. They were constantly checking in with us students to make sure that we knew we were not alone in this situation. Them reaching out really helped to keep me motivated to end off the year strong. And I can't even imagine how difficult it was to be able to have to switch to online teaching so fast. So thank you for your hard work. Now that it's a new year and we've had a little bit more experience in this online school thing, I'm confident that we will be able to get through to the other side successfully. I know starting off the year this way isn't ideal, but that doesn't mean we still can't have a great semester. As someone who grew up in the Maynard School District since kindergarten, I know that we can handle anything that comes our way. Let's make this year the best we can. Thank you teachers, and here's to another amazing year in Maynard. I like to tell the story of when I was in second grade and I finished an assignment early and I asked my teacher what to do. And she asked me if I would draw a picture and I tried to draw a star and I am not an artist. <laughs> my star was very sloppy. And she looked at it and she pointed at it and she said, Caitlin, you should be a teacher. You draw teacher stars. And I asked her what she meant by that. And she said, we have to draw stars very quickly on assignments to show kids that they did a good job. So sometimes our stars are sloppy too. And just being introduced to the idea that while my stars may not have suited that particular assignment, I may not have grown up to be an artist, uh, my skills still served a purpose. And it just always stuck in the back of my mind that what one person may have seen as a sloppy star, another person saw as an opportunity to develop my future career. Um, and so from that point on, I wanted to look into that and see what I could do to further the learning of other people. It's, it's the experience of a lifetime. There's really, uh, 
there's really nothing like seeing the look in a child's eyes when they start to feel the same self-worth and start to imagine the possibilities for their own life. We often look at children as um, little people who know nothing at the moment, who we are filling with knowledge. But the truth is that children come to us with so many backgrounds and experiences with a wealth of knowledge that they bring into the classroom. And we get the opportunity to foster that and to point out their strengths and to show them what they can do with that. And I think that is frankly just awesome that we get paid to do it. It's wonderful. Um, we, we feel the pressure to be perfect, to always have the right answer. But I think that kids greatly appreciate when we are willing to admit that we don't know either and when we are willing to take that journey of learning something new with them. And that is something that I learned as an educator because as a novice teacher, I thought I always needed to have the answer. And if I didn't have the answer, then I would change the subject. But why would we ever change the subject if a student is interested in learning something? So it took time and learning from fellow teachers for me to better understand that me showing that I'm still learning is an asset to the classroom, not a deficit. Having to shift to virtual learning was overwhelming. It was a shock. I think everybody in the learning community wondered how we would even be able to do this, what it would look like. But at the same time, it was wonderful to have the opportunity to imagine something different. I think if you talk to any educator, they could tell you ideas that they have to make learning better for certain students. And this really offered us an opportunity to pause and consider if we could make learning anything we felt was best for our students, what would that look like? And yes, it's a challenge for them to be at home and not in the classroom. And it's not just a challenge for us, it's a challenge for parents and it's a challenge for the kids. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to reimagine what learning can and should look like for the kids in our room, for their families, and how we can better support each other as we approach this issue as a community. Because honestly, um, we can no longer do it ourselves. We can't hide in our classroom and do what we know best. We have to know how to work with others and we have to see that as a positive thing and really utilize all of the knowledge and skills and talents of those around us so we can best serve our students as a community. You are rock stars. Whether or not you think you know technology the way that you need to, whether or not you believe that you are a Zoom expert or a Nearpod certified educator, you know the content and you know your scholars. And that is what we need right now. You have the opportunity to show them that they are loved and that they are cared for. And it doesn't matter whether it's face-to-face -face or through a screen. If you can show them that, then you will continue to make that connection and you will continue to change lives. We can ask for support from one another, and this is the opportunity for us to become comfortable with that. But also, just realize we're gonna make mistakes. Have grace, have grace for yourself, for your students and for your families, and know that we will get through this together. We are all in this together. All right, it's time for the prizes, right? That's why we're all here, so we're gonna do the random number generator again. So here we go. We go, that's no good, no good. And our first winner is 595. So let's go down our list. 595 is Rebecca Harsh from Maynard Elementary School. What are they putting in the water over there? They keep on winning. All right. 
what are the odds? It's crazy. Okay, here we go. There, we're not cheating, I swear. All right, here we go. No good, no good, and 263. We have Kevin Collins from Maynard High School. All right, two, six, three. And then for our third and final prize, that's no good, no good. Here we go, 256. We have Sonora Co. from Facilities. Congratulations, guys. We're gonna have one more drawing, so stick around. And this is going to sound completely opposite of what you see, because um, like I do do a lot and I go overboard for like my kids and my campus. But I'm not a awards type person, so I don't expect the award. I just do my job. And to me, what I do each and every day is just part of my job. Um, and I don't seek recognition. But if it happens, it's great. But it's not my focus or my reason for doing what I do. So I was very <laughs> surprised. I didn't know that they were announcing that. I thought I was just on the meeting to support my teacher of the year. And so I was like, say what now? <laughs> OK, funny story. I never wanted to be an educator at all. Um, my grandmother was a teacher. Um, and so I grew up with my grandmother in the home and I saw the stress and the coming home and all the things, grading papers, and I was like, ugh, that's a no for me. Plus the salary <laughs> was not quite where we wanted it to be, so I wanted to be a lawyer. So I went to school to do all things criminal justice. I was at about, say, second year in to being a juvenile probation officer and I met a kid. And in sixth grade, he had decided that school was not for him and he wanted to drop out. And so I was like, what could possibly have happened in sixth grade schooling to make him not want to go to school anymore? And so I had a reverse change of mind and I started, I went back to school to get a teaching certificate and I started teaching and I've been doing it ever since. And I always think that I'm a teacher first. You, you never stop teaching. Either you're teaching adults or you're teaching kids, but you're still teaching even though you're leading them. Um, and so it just transitioned from teacher to curriculum specialist, to instructional coach, to assistant principal, to principal. And I think I have the best job in the world um, because I get to see all levels. I can play with the kids in the classroom when I um, lose that feeling of teaching, but then I can also teach adults to teach kids how to be better. So I love being a principal, I love my job. I like to tell people all the time, kids are watching, whether we say something or don't say something, whether we react or don't react. All behavior is saying something, whether it's adult behavior or student behavior. What I would like parents to take away from this opportunity is the same thing I tell my teachers. You have to give yourself grace and it's okay to fail. The internet didn't connect today. Okay, we'll try again tomorrow. I responded to a parent thing on Facebook and she was like, there has to be a better way to do this. How can you expect my six-year-old to sit in front of the computer and do this all day? I have to work. Okay, it was day one. Day two will be better. Day three will be even better than that. And now it's day seven, and I hope it's better than day one. But we don't expect perfection, so stop trying to be perfect. Your six-year-old doesn't know how to do it yet. And it's that yet that we are striving to get to. It's about a growth mindset. So I know they're frustrated. I know it's hard. They think that they are replacing the teacher, and now they're the teacher at home. But that's not what we want. We don't want them to be the teacher. We're still teachers. We just want them to be our instructional partner in guiding their students in this learning process. And if they have problems, call the school, we'll answer, email the teacher, send a let's talk, we will be there to support them in this journey. That's what I would like them to take away. Well, to all the principals in the district, we have the best group of principals probably in the state of Texas. We're collaborative, we communicate. If there's a trouble or a problem or a concern that any of us have, we have each other. And I think that's what's gonna make us be this destination district that we all desire to be. So let's keep doing the work that we're doing together as partners. For teachers, just keep doing you. You guys are amazing. I know that it took a lot of courage and a lot of commitment 
to go into virtual learning and then still be able to manage your families at home, all the things that you have to do. So I would just say continue to be the great people that you are and together we can do this work, I promise. Doesn't, saying it's not hard, but I promise it gets easier and we'll get better at it the more we do it. All right, we have one more drawing, so keep your fingers crossed if you didn't win the last two go around. So here we go. We're gonna have no good, no good, and our first winner is 317. 317. Elsa De Luna from Maynard Elementary School. Are you? <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I can't make this up. I'm not cheating. That's crazy. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. So our second winner, all right, no good, no good. And our winner is number 49. 49 is Veronica Arellano from Maynard Middle School. All right, this is your last chance. If Maynard Elementary wins again, I don't even know what to say, y'all. It's rigged. All right, no good, no good. <laughs> 1480, all right, who's 1480? There we go. I went too far. <laughs> so the last winner is Kelly Towles from Maynard Early College High School. Congratulations to all of our winners. We're gonna be in touch with you about how you can get these wellness baskets that were all donated by uh, the Maynard ISD Partnerships in Education. Thank you all so much for watching. We still have some more amazing speeches, so stick around. My name is Robin Emmerich and I'm so honored to be here with you today. I wish I could just hug you all in person, yet know that my heart is with you and I've really sat with this opportunity of what I could share the most with you today during these unprecedented times of uncertainty and, and change, you know, continued change every day is what we're all facing and what is really important to take a look at as we navigate the new school year. I'm a native Austinite and I've been in Austin coaching for the last 10 years in the Westside area. In the last two months, I published a book that navigates my coaching methodology with each of my clients over the last 10 years. I share my personal story, my client stories, and more importantly, the actual methodology. It's a five-step me methodology called the Emotional Reset Method that is at the core of my work. I truly believe it's why I have lasting change with my clients and has been very different from a normal therapy routine. What I've discovered over the last 10 years has been a toolbox of how to navigate life from the inside versus out meaning that it's a way of seeing what is in front of us being for us so that we can learn to stay centered, calm, and in control of our own state. So I actually took some time to really sit with how I could help you most in a short amount of time. And what I wanna share with you today is three tools that will help you to reset in any moment to understand what your thought patterns are that are directing each moment and to connect your heart to it to bring a sense of clarity and peace and connections my new book love the mess is a five-step methodology to changing your personal and professional life now that said the chapter in the very center is the number one most important chapter called But First, The Emotional Reset Method. In this chapter, I share the methodology from my mentor, Dr. Coletta Long, 
who has developed this technique of releasing our emotions from our cellular memory in our body and subconscious mind to reset our state and move forward throughout the day. Most of us carry emotional baggage and often just want to bury it because we are not taught the tools on what to do with it. So I know that it's a kind of a sticky situation to start talking about emotions, yet in this time, it is the number one area that can quickly transform our day and allow us to think more clearly, be less stressed, and to have the relationships possible with the people in front of us, whether it's the kids, parents, colleagues, to be present throughout the day for whatever shows up. Because as we know, as I've said, each day is changing. And so in this methodology, I'm gonna share the five steps that really only take five minutes and they are simple steps, yet it is a little bit challenging until you practice the steps. Our conscious mind is not where we are typically operating from. It is our subconscious mind, and we actually have the power to reprogram it with the right tools. So in my recent book, Love the Mess, I outline in, in the middle chapter here, chapter four, the emotional reset method. And what that means is that we have the power within us to reset our emotions in a simple five-step method. It is simple, yet it may not be easy in the beginning until you get the hang of it because we're not typically used to sitting with ourselves and identifying our emotions. I know so many parents, teachers, administrators, children are anxious right now during this time and with the day-to-day -day changes, there are moments where we find ourselves caught up in all of the overwhelm. So this tool is where we can release any overwhelm, any fatigue, and simply be, I'm tired, is our emotion that we're feeling that we need to overcome to get through the day. It can be any frustration or uh, any feelings of fear. Anything that is showing up for us we can go within in a simple five-step method and release it. The first step is to pause and tune in to how you feel. It's very helpful to close your eyes and just stay in your center, breathing down into your stomach, your lower back, and hips. So this is just calming your body, allowing that to that centeredness to flow through you. And just to have a moment dedicated to you. The second step is to describe it. What do you feel? Do you feel a sense of overwhelm? anxiety, maybe you're just feeling fatigued, trying to make it through the day, simply notice and get in touch with that state. Just notice anything that comes up. And then the third step is going to be to locate it. Where do you feel it? If you think about having an anxious or worried feeling, you can feel that here, or maybe it's just that feeling of uncertainty and you notice it in your neck or shoulders. You just bring your awareness to where that is. And the next step, step number four, is to give it a visual. So you wanna describe it as a color. This gives the subconscious mind something to work with. And, you know, dark can actually be a color. It does not have to be red, blue, black, white. It is not as much about the actual color you choose 
as about just giving a description to it so that your mind can work with it. And then the last step, I'm just gonna go with the dark color, just for this example, is to release it and let it go. So I would visualize this dark heaviness, tension, weight on my shoulders moving up and out the top of my head. And as I describe it, I would use thoughts, feelings, words, images, anything to start to express it and give it a voice. And this allows it to just push up and out the top of our head. So I would be closing my eyes if I were doing it now and visualizing that dark, heaviness, tension, overwhelm, stress, moving up and out the top of my head. So this is a simple method, yet as you practice this, it is gonna feel a little bit challenging at first and then get easier and easier. Why we want to work with our emotions is because we have so much more control over our state than we realize. With this technique, you may wake up feeling tired in the morning, do this method, and then find yourself with much more energy. You may be in class in the middle of the day and have a situation that brought on so much stress that you feel frazzled, unable to get through the day, if you can step aside, do this less than five minute method, you can allow yourself to get back on track to take charge of the day. All of the change taking place is bringing up a state of disconnect that is not allowing us to tune into our normal day-to-day -day routine, thoughts, actions, etc. So this method is something that you can do anytime, anywhere, for anything and gain the benefits. I actually would love to take questions on this, so I want to make sure to give you my email address as you're practicing this. It's robin at robin emmerich, E-M-M-E-R-I-C-H dot com, because I would love to hear from you what you're experiencing and if you have any questions to allow you to gain the full benefits. So the second tool I have for you that is really important as you begin to identify your state is to start identifying the thought patterns that you're having throughout the day. So most of us are not aware of what our subconscious say. For example, we may be feeling so overwhelmed that we are on a track of, I'm so stressed out, I don't know what to do. Or I have so much on my plate, I can't get it all done. When we can learn to identify those thought patterns and start a record in our, I, I would just take your phone in your notes section, start keeping a record of those thought patterns, then you can understand more of your emotional state as well as your thought patterns that are holding you back from anything that you're wanting to accomplish. So let's say you start the day with a lesson plan that you're teaching and halfway through it, you begin to feel a lack of confidence in your ability to teach this brand new material that you've been given or this online class that you're teaching and have never taught before. One of those examples would be a thought pattern that is underlying a message of, I can't do this. So if you begin to be aware of those moments, anything that, any moments where you feel more critical, more judgmental of yourself, any judgments on others, or just more of a negative, heavy feeling, you want to jot down that thought so that you can then go back and ask, is this thought true? And is this belief in my highest good? Because we know that we are all empowered, fully capable humans, and the thought patterns may be someone else's voice that is taking charge over our own thoughts. Yet if we do not do the inner work to gain control of those thoughts, then it's difficult to change the pattern. 
something fun that you can do together in a group is to draw your inner gremlin and actually see these thought patterns out in front of you. Now, don't let that first thought be that you're not creative. You let that inner artist come out, even if it's just a stick figure of a little gremlin that is you with three talk bubbles of the thoughts that show up most often. So, you know, it may be, I don't have time. I don't have enough time to get everything done. It may be, I'm not good enough, or I don't know what I'm doing. It could be just a sense of anxiety that is a message running, I feel anxious. Whatever it is, Put that in the three talk bubbles and then hang it up to where you can see that gremlin every day and even give it a name. If you give it a name other than your own name, you can start to see that this voice is not you. And you can start to see that these thought patterns that are more negative, judgmental, constrictive, and, and have that emotional charge are not who you really are. The third piece that I want to leave you with today is to see with your heart, meaning that every person you see, whether in the classroom or online, at home, wherever you're at, imagine dropping from this head, this strong mind of ours into our heart and seeing that person in front of us with our heart. When you see with your heart, you can just envision connecting your mind with your heart. And if you can even just bow your head, hold your heart, or simply imagine the words L O V E inside your heart. Just allow that sense of connection to integrate within you and then expand out to others that you connect with. And it is just these simple tools that take one minute, that take one minute, two minutes, or the emotional reset method, five minutes, to find yourself reset and we never know what anyone else is going through, especially when we are in a state of overwhelm or stress or just busyness ourselves. So, you know, it's similar to when we are driving to or from work in a hurry and get frustrated with that person that is stopping in front of us or causing some sort of havoc that you know makes us want to honk the horn or yell in those moments it's so important to remember that that person is just like us you can even use the phrase just like me to remind yourself of those moments that you felt that way whether it was driving or in your own home um, on your own time we've all gone through it and I think that it's really important, especially now more than ever, to remember that we truly are all in this together. And it's having these tools, these three tools are the most simple yet powerful tools I can share with you that are going to help you connect the mind and heart to navigate this time with more certainty, more confidence, and more ease. Really, that's what we're all wanting is just some more ease at this time to get through it because there is so much more ahead and there truly is an opportunity to See that we're all in this together and allow everyone that we connect with or come in contact with 
to feel that. We are the leaders and messengers to bring this message out. And what more beautiful way than the kids, than the children and to be that leader and example for them because we all know that they are feeling the stress of these times more than they can actually express. So through doing this inner work, we can allow ourselves to allow it to show on the outside and lead by example. So thank you. It is such an honor to be here. And if you want to check out my book, Love the Mess, it is on Amazon. Again, it details the emotional reset method that I had coined after my mentor, Dr. Cleta Long, what she taught me that has been, as I said, in effect for close to 70 years now and life changing for myself, every client I've met and so far everyone that has read the book. So my heart is with you all. I am here. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to email me as you navigate this. I'd love to hear your experiences and also be here for any questions as you navigate this time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show, especially the message from Ava Adams. It was indeed delightful. She is the reason why we do what we do here in Maynard ISD. If you're not excited, I'm not sure why, but I know I'm sure excited. I am truly ready for the new academic school year. So buckle your seatbelts because we are in for a really nice ride. And as always, remember, our scholars are first, and we are going to be the number one school district in the state of Texas. Thank you and have a wonderful school year. <laughs>